arrest this noon after confessing to a crime against her six-year-old daughter. The little girl is hovering between life and death this Monday noon while psychiatrists try to decide what happened, why a mother crept into her child's room and allegedly tried to strangle her firstborn. Long Island correspondent Troy Roberts has the very latest now live from Nassau County Medical Center in East Meadow. Troy. Thank you, Lisa. Police rushed Barbara Van Floor Testa here last night because they were concerned about her mental state. She underwent a psychiatric evaluation and is due to be arraigned for the attempted murder of her daughter this afternoon. As you said, detectives say Van Floor Testa tried to strangle her daughter to death, and the question this noon is why. In the pediatric ward at the NASA County Medical Center, six-year-old Marissa Testa is on life support systems fighting to stay alive. While several floors away, doctors are determining whether her mother, Barbara Van Floor Testa, is competent to be arraigned for the attempted murder of her child. Marissa was rushed to the hospital early on Mother's Day morning after her mother surrendered to police at the first precinct. She did walk into the station house and indications were that she believed her daughter was dead. After Marissa's mother walked into the first precinct, police dispatch officers to the Testa family home here and called the girl's father, Kenneth. When police finally reached Kenneth Testa, he was asleep in the basement. He rushed upstairs to the master bedroom and found Marissa face down on the floor, unconscious. Police officers gave Marissa CPR, but she did not regain consciousness. The little girl was reportedly scheduled to undergo surgery this summer for an unidentified medical condition that causes seizures. And her mother, according to news accounts, was frustrated with the little girl's medical condition. Police, however, will not publicly speculate on a motive. Can you understand this, though? It's just not for me to understand. I, you don't know what is in somebody else's heart and mind. At the Old Mill Elementary School, where Marissa is a kindergarten student, counselors today are working with Marissa's young classmates to help them cope with their fears and concerns. Police say Kenneth Testa is not a suspect in this case. The couple's two-year-old son was home at the time of the alleged attack, but was unharmed. I'll have more for you at 5 o'clock. I'm Troy Roberts reporting live from East Meadow. Let's go back to Dana and Lisa in the studio. Troy, thank you. There are no answers this noon for children of a Queens mother found stabbed to death. Detectives say a man discovered the body of his wife, 32-year-old Miriam Molina, in the hallway of their home in Corona early today. The husband, who called police to the scene, is now being questioned. Police say the children were not home at, at the time. They were with their grandmother. So far, no weapon and no motive in the killing. Damn. Troubling questions are being raised this Monday after Siamese twins died in a Brooklyn hospital after a minor procedure. Channel 2's John Slattery is live at Brookdale Hospital with more on the death of the six-month-old twins. John? The question here is, did Brookdale Hospital take on more than it could handle? Did it perform a series of delicate operations uh, for the publicity, doing it free of charge? Those are charges that are being made today in a story in the New York Post over the death of Siamese twins. Brookdale Medical Center has so far made no comment, but according to the New York Post, the hospital is embroiled in a controversy over the death of Siamese twins and for allowing a surgeon to come out of retirement to perform the series of operations. And critical to the controversy is that the twins did not die as a result of any surgery to separate. It never got that far. The twins died after a preliminary operation. The Post reports that the little boys joined at the hip, Lorenzo and Lorenz Lamont, were brought to New York from Trinidad by their mother. The Post reports that the surgeon who was to perform the separation had retired two years before and had performed a Siamese separation only once in his career. And that doctor, Asher Mastel, reportedly said his co-surgeon had never done it before. According to the report, Several orthopedic surgeons at Brookdale had refused to participate because of the hospital's lack of experience in such operations. The Post suggests that the financially troubled hospital took on the surgical project in an effort to enhance its image. But before any attempt to separate the twins, the Post says they underwent a series of preliminary operations to stretch the skin, said to be very simple procedures, but the twins died after the third of those operations. We reached the children's father in Trinidad. He said only that he was told by the hospital that it was a simple procedure. He says he doesn't know what went wrong. The hospital says the surgeon who came out of retirement flew off on a trip to Europe just yesterday. 
The Coast Surgeon at this point has no comment. The hospital says it will respond in about an hour. The state health department told us that at this point they see no wrongdoing and do not plan to investigate. We'll have more on the Channel 2 News this evening. That's it. Dana, Lisa. Thanks, John. A Brooklyn police officer who beat incredible odds is going home today. Mary Capitosto had been hospitalized for the past month. A suspect under arrest at the 70th precinct shot her in the head as she ran to the rescue of a fellow officer. Doctors thought Officer Capitosto, who was in a coma, had little chance of surviving. But just four days after the shooting, her husband, who's also a cop, asked her to open her eyes. And she did. When a prominent journalist who had worked hard to expose the workings of Colombian drug cartels was gunned down, there was a lot of speculation about <clears throat> just, excuse me, just who ordered that hit. Well, today, 10 men are about to be indicted for the murder of Manuel de Dios. Channel 2's David Diaz has the story. Investigators now say it was not de Dios's reporting on local drug trafficking and money laundering that led to his death. No, they say it was his reporting about the drug cartel's operations in Colombia and in particular his publishing a photo of one of the drug kingpins. Police say the bloody trail led them to Jose Santa Cruz Londoño, known as El Chepe, the shepherd, head of the Cali cartel. He allegedly ordered the hit and put out the $30,000 contract through John William Mena, a Queens operative for the Cali organization who fell into the cops' hands over a year ago. Mena, in turn, allegedly hired Juan Carlos Velasco, known as Leo, and his wife, Elizabeth Castaño. Channel 2 News has learned Velasco became a suspect within days of the assassination. An investigator says the case turned when the couple was arrested last September. They allegedly gave up Jose Benitez, known as Cabezón, or Big Head, who in turn allegedly hired the two hitmen, Elkin Salazar, known as Pocho, and Alejandro Mejillas, El Mono, or Monkey Man, whose arrest over the weekend in Miami wrapped up this case. Well, Mejias, the alleged gunman, reportedly only saw $1,500 of the $30,000 that was put out for the hit on De Dios. Now, why did the case take so long to put together? Will authorities here be able to get their hands on the drug chief who ordered the hit? And what impact, if any, will breaking this case have on the drug trade in Queens? Well, those among the questions facing the federal and local investigators will have a press conference on this major case within the hour. Big break. Yeah, Thank you, David. Investigators are trying to pinpoint the cause of a fire that forced residents to run for their lives in Mount Vernon. Flames swept through a three-story home and then spread to an apartment building last night. Fourteen people were injured, most of them firefighters who fought the blaze until early this morning. Two residents suffered serious burns. They are still hospitalized. Fire marshals say they have the man who crossed a sacred boundary and vandalized a Bronx church. Investigators announced the arrest an hour ago, saying they believe the suspect was hired by local drug dealers. He's charged with setting fires and destroying statues and other valuable items in the Holy Cross Church last November. The pastor of the church is known for his anti-drug crusade in the community. We have a lot more news still to come for you on this Monday, May 10th. Up next, hundreds are believed dead in a South American landslide. We'll have details about that. We'll also take a close-up look at the devastation that followed a tornado's trip to a Texas town and what U.N. forces discovered when they finally arrived in a Bosnia for survivors of a deadly landslide in Ecuador. Tons of soil and rocks came crashing down on a poor mining town in the region of Loja following heavy rainstorms yesterday. As many as 250 people may have been buried alive inside their homes. Many of the victims worked as gold prospectors and lived in dwellings made of wood and tin. Lisa. Another natural disaster, this one closer to home. Correspondent Lucrezia Quinn reports from Texas on the tornado that changed one town forever. From the air above Wiley, you can see the path 200 yards wide cut by the tornado. From the ground, you see the destruction of property and lives. One man was killed when the tornado blew in the walls of his trailer. It appeared that the wall itself was on his back and it just suffocated and just, just uh, squashed the life out of him. Wiley residents picked through the rubble of what was once their homes, gathering scattered possessions. The tornado seemed to hop skip through the business section of Wiley, damaging some stores, leveling others. The whole town is just devastated. I'm just so glad this wasn't a weekday. Look at those buildings. <laughs> This tool and dye manufacturing plant destroyed. Eckert's pharmacy demolished, blown apart.
the roof torn off this corner deli, and there's little left of the drive through bank. The injured are being transported out of the area. Wiley's hospital has been evacuated. It, too, was in the path of the storm. Lucretia Quinn for CBS News. United Nations forces visiting one of the six so-called safe areas in Bosnia say it's the site of a humanitarian catastrophe. The military observers arrived in Jepa, a deserted town where thousands of people once lived. They found bodies in a bombed-out mosque. Jepa was one of the safe areas declared by the UN last week after Bosnian Serbs rejected a peace plan to end the civil war. Up next, the FDA gives women the green light to use condoms. We will have that for you. Also, would you like to learn how to give your child a vision test? After a break, Frank begins a week-long series on an eye-opening subject, your family's vision. Stay tuned. Here they come. The kids just love delicious sandwiches made with Borden Singles. The only singles in the reclosable Singles Keeper to keep cheese fresher longer. Borden Singles are so creamy because every slice is made with the same dairy goodness as pure fresh Borden milk. Mm, wow! Delicious Borden Singles in the reclosable Singles Keeper. No wonder Borden is the only brand we cows indoors. Elmer, no seconds. If it's Borden, it's got to be good. If you suffer from the misery of migraines, you're not alone. More than 18 million Americans are suffering with you. Some look for relief in a cup of coffee. Some find it with high-tech drugs. But for some, there's no relief at all. Now, Channel 2 has good news for people trying to break free from migraine pain. A new laser therapy that may bring peace of mind. Don't miss our special report, Migraines Ending the Misery, tonight at 11 on Channel 2 News. I was shopping at Pathmark when I saw this new grease-releasing Tide. I figured it was worth a try. I had this really tough hamburger stain on my new blouse. There was grease all over. My friend Jan felt terrible. When it comes to tough grease like this hamburger stain, nothing beats the power of new Tide with grease releasers. Now at a great price at Pathmark. The grease was gone. I told Jan this new Tide got it out. That didn't surprise her, but the great price did. Try new Tide with grease releasers now at Pathmark. A few years ago, my wife and I broke up, divorced. Jacobian Myers was her lawyer. The court said that I had to pay child support. I paid some. Now I'm served a summons, Jacobian Myers again. And now they're trying to take what I owe right out of my paycheck, and she wants more because the kids are older. Why won't Jacoby and Myers just get off my back? Women will soon have another method of birth control as an option. The FDA announced this morning that it has given the go-ahead for distribution of the first female condom. It's a plastic sheath with two rings that hold it in place inside the vagina. The new product will be sold under the brand name Reality. In our noon health watch for this Monday, this is Vision Week 93 and a chance for you to join in free eye screening programs in our area. Frank Field now begins a special look at children and their eyes. A lot of parents don't know when to start testing their kids. That's right. In fact, that leads us to our first question. Huh. So let's begin with this true or false question. Children should get their first eye examination just before they enter school. Do you think that's true or do you think that's false? What do you think? True, well, you're wrong. <laughs> Stage manager got it wrong. Eye experts tell us that children should have their eyes examined at birth and at regular periods thereafter, well before ever thinking of entering school. Now, it's also important. All right, it's also important to have children's eyes and your eyes checked regularly for any physical changes that may occur, and there's an easy way to do that. This instrument is called an ophthalmoscope, and doctors use it to look inside your eye. And that's a very unique opportunity for doctors to actually see the blood vessels at work. And because of that, they can often spot disease problems early on. Now, what is done is to focus this light into the eye, and then slowly but surely, the doctor will look through the clear lens of the eye into the back of the eye. And they can do this because the fluid that fills the eye is also clear. Now this is what a normal fundus or retina looks like inside the eye. 
This is what your doctor can see, the beating blood vessels in the back of the eye, the head of the optic nerve, that's that white circle in the back of the eye. If this patient had diabetes, this is what your doctor might see. Or if the patient had high blood pressure, he would see this. Very often, a child or adult doesn't know that they have an eye problem. And that's why regular eye examinations are so important to prevent loss of sight. Now, all this week, you can stop in at any McDonald and you can get this free eye chart. You can test your child's vision by following the instructions on that chart. And in addition, uh, you can get all kinds of information. You can also, can we go to the telephone number? Or you can call the National Society to Prevent Blindness at 212 980, I'll bet they remember 2020, ah. right? 980-2020, that's 212-980-2020 to get information and we get a free eye check. And you'll do this all week? We're going to be doing this all week. Great, great. Test ourselves later. Okay. Thank you, Frank. When the weather warms up, the already steamy scenes on the soaps begin to shift gears, setting for a whole new generation of viewers. Soap Opera Digest, Meredith Berlin has details from the daytime drama front. I Meredith. sure do, yes. Okay, summer is around the corner, which means they are planning plenty of action for the young viewers. And among them, on Guiding Light, look for AC Mallet and Harley to finally tie the knot. Also, the big story is going to be who are Peter's parents? And you can expect a lot of explosiveness when Roger learns that Billy is raising his grandchild. The hot young lovers and all my children this summer will be Haley and Charlie, but it's not going to be without angst or misunderstandings. And Dixie may be left without a man when Brooke and Tad try to make their relationship work. Over on Days of Our Lives, we're going to find out who is the father of Marlena's bo uh, baby, either John or Roman, of course, of course. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> um, uh, it's a long story. <laughs> um, bold and beautiful, Macy will find herself pursued by three men, Sly, Keith, and Thorne, but she continues to have a problem with alcohol. Eric and Sheila do tie the knot. And if you're in town on Saturday, May 22nd, it's a great day to stop into the Hunter University gym, college gym. That's when One Life to Live's Tom Christopher hosts the 1993 All-Star Volleyball Game. Everything benefits the Manhattan Special Olympics. You can find out more by calling 212-502-3 784 stars from all the New York soaps will be on hand for autographs and there'll be a, sil a silent auction. Sounds great. Meredith, the baby was due <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Listen, keep me here any longer. I might be born right here right oh, I now. I gotta go. She whipped a few That's seconds ago. We better go. let her Hopefully go. we won't see you next week. <laughs> okay, oh, <God>. thank you. <laughs> From the steamy soaps to a steamy forecast. Frank says the heat, though, is not going to stick around too long. He'll have a forecast for you at 